resist. Hey, thanks for watching our live stream. I'm the host, David Craig, and I'll be back in about 10 minutes with the show. In the meantime, have a look at some of these clips and take the opportunity, please, to like this broadcast, ring the bell, or subscribe. Uh, and we're stepping up uh, in every way we can because we know that Russia must uh, win this war. It's a, sorry, that Ukraine must win this war uh, against Russia. Uh, go down the list of things that Justin Trudeau disapproves of and you can imagine all of the things that will be criminalized. That someone who spent the first half of his adult life as a practicing racist, who dressed up in hideous racist costumes so many times, he says he can't remember them all, should then be the arbiter on what constitutes hate. Uh, I did not call people who were unvaccinated names. The Prime Minister lied and his minions continue to lie about you for everything you did. Thank you to put your life on the line for us. You're one of the greatest women I ever met in my life. A lot of people would, would say that you're simply taking a page out of the Donald Trump uh, book. Probably like which people would say that? Well, I'm sure a great many Canadians, but... Like who? <laughs> I don't know who, but... We feel, because you all will have implants, I can, and we measure your, your brain waves, and I can immediately tell you how the people react, or I can feel uh, how the people react um, to your answers. Oh, no, Mr. Bond! I expect you to be chipped! I'm a, I'm a liberal and a proud socialist, Mr. Speaker. This is a Manchurian candidate. For people who don't understand the expression, and I'm not talking about the movie, I'm referring to somebody who can be used as a useful idiot by another country to come out and spout these things off. He is a Marxist. End your silence. Speak up. For God's sake, stop complying. Start rebelling. They're out to get you. If you do not resist. Good buddy, mercy sake alive, looks like we got us a convoy. Canadian country singer Paul Brandt here. I've been listening with, with my wife and two kids, and we want to say thank you for all you're doing in defense of civil liberties and freedom. I'll ask the question I posed to you at the start of my round. Will you apologize on behalf of the government for this outrageous invite? Um, and stand by the invitation. Uh, of, of course, I. Uh, what I said in my initial. You have no shame. What? 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 Oh my heavens! Uh, there is nothing, nothing they fear like the crystal clear sound of someone somewhere telling the truth. So it will be a world integrating the physical, biological, and um, the uh, d uh, digital dimensions. So it will be a new world. Stop giving them the benefit of the doubt. Because I can tell you, you cannot comply your way out of a tyranny. Out of war, a few people make huge fortunes. I would say it's plain to see that the racket has been going from strength to strength ever since. In his farewell address to the American people in 1961, outgoing president and old soldier Dwight D. Eisenhower warned about the threat posed by what he was already able to identify as the military industrial complex. These are all small countries today. They, they're much like the Greek city-states in the age of the Roman Empire. We're a, we're a sort of declining Rome at this point. I hope Americans will figure that out and act against it, but we are. We're a declining Rome. The European states are like the little Greek city-states that were entirely dependent upon Roman military power to save them from the Macedonians. This whole business is a sham. NATO is probably not going to survive. From the Public, Agen Public Health Agency of Canada did not have the science to support this policy. So the government initiated a study with a guy named David Fisman at the University of Toronto. And this study was so bad, Madam Speaker, that there's a book called Fisman's Fraud, 
the rise of Canadian hate science, and I just want to know how much money did they spend on these studies to support this Arrive scam when they knew that they didn't have the science to even support it from day one. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Well, Ma Madam Speaker, the mega conservative far right is coming out. These are the the anti, uh, you know, these are the ones that still deny uh, the, the the you know the, the pandemic. And at the end of the day, um, you know, thank goodness it was uh, that Canadians and the majority of the people in the House saw the value of protecting the health and well-being of Canadians, and that the far right was marginalized uh, back then, Madam Speaker, because as a direct result. Result, more people are living today. When did you and your government start to become so afraid of your own citizens? The Online Harms Act. You heard about it? Well, I've got some bad news for you. It is aimed at your free speech. Thank God for truckers. They are so terrified that we the people may make what they think is the wrong choice. That in the name of protecting democracy and saving us from ourselves, they're actually destroying our democracy and taking away our freedom. Uh, this is the worst assault on freedom of expression ever in Canadian history. Donc, donc le but c'était de faire une pression économique, empêcher de faire. So the goal was to put economic pressure on these people to stop them from buying groceries, paying into their health insurance, and get them out of the streets. I want the characterization that I would put on it. The objective was to ensure that those who were funding the continued illegal blockade of this and other cities were no longer able to do so. Okay. Donc vous pas répondu à ma question. So you didn't answer my first question. In which other democratic country is it possible to do that? Critically passed legislation in this country pursuant to the Emergencies Act in Canada. Okay, donc vous avez fait le droit là. Vous vous êtes inspiré de la Corée du Nord. So what, were you inspired by North Korea for this? No. I'm not going to respond to that type of question, Madam Chair. Not me. He's calling them domestic terrorists and wants to freeze their bank accounts. This has been absolutely outrageous. And everybody now is, is starting to agree that Justin Trudeau has lost this fight. There will be consequences. Justin Trudeau, though, this week, said something I hated, which he called out. He said, you know, the world is we're see, we're starting to see the rise, the growth of authoritarianism and totalitarianism and dictatorships. And I, I couldn't believe that he said this with a straight face. Listen. Then all of our democracies in every democracy around the world, we are seeing uh, a rising uh, movements of uh, either uh, authoritarian populism uh, or uh, skepticism about democracy itself uh, and we all need to recommit ourselves to standing up not just for Ukraine but through standing up for Ukraine to the very principles that make our countries strong and free. So Justin Trudeau says these comments almost he says them with a straight face as if he doesn't realize what's happening in his own country being led by him to clamp down on freedoms. The authoritarianism that he is presiding over in Canada. Biden mourned Navalny's death. Even in prison, he was a powerful voice for the truth, he said. An interesting statement, while journalist Julian Assange, who published Truth Inconvenient to the US and the West, presently rots in Belmarsh prison as he fights extradition to the US. I'm not yet aware of Biden mentioning, far less lamenting, the death in a Ukrainian prison of US citizen and writer Gonzalo Lira, who was critical of the Zelensky regime. Biden's administration has sought determinedly to jail his and their strongest and most popular opponent, Donald Trump. And yet, in the immediate aftermath of Navalny's death, Biden highlighted Vladimir Putin's desperate attempts to stamp out the opposition. Zelensky, propped up only by Western cash, has crushed his own political opponents as well. The pattern seems clear, bleak about enemies threatening democracy, while simultaneously and blatantly and hypocritically seeking to trample on democracy at home, or turn a blind eye to the same being carried out by allies, or make that business partners.
Well, thank you for watching today. I'm David Creighton, your host of Stand on Guard. This is live at question period, and we do this as much as we can. And I hope you have a chance to watch or will be watching my interview with Neil Oliver, my friend Neil Oliver, who really has been a fantastic spokesman for free speech and for common sense, not only in Scotland and the UK, but across Europe and the world now. And, and he is just a phenomenal individual, a theologist for years, never dabbled in politics. It was the COVID-19 pandemic that got him politically active because he was sick of the government coming down on people with mandates and telling people to get the vaccine or they couldn't work, couldn't travel, couldn't live. So please watch the interview if you can. And I've got a couple of things I want to go through because right now, I think that one of the major issues and if you look at X today, what's been trending is Trudeau must go. That's a hashtag I, opt, I often use. But a lot of people are using that today because Trudeau knew all about Chinese election interference. The Prime Minister's office was briefed 34 times. At least 18 candidates were affected by Chinese interference, by Chinese assistance, by being targeted by Chinese agents or proxies. And this happened in at least two elections, at least two elections. Watch this incredible exchange here between the, uh, com the commission lawyers and Natalie Drouin who is now the Deputy Justice Minister. Confirm that CSIS provided briefings to the panel of five sure. in the lead up to the yes, uh, election. He, yes, CSIS did. All right, thank you. Um, if we can scroll back up to the middle of page two. Uh, there, perfect. So uh, here, uh, CSIS writes, uh, we know that the PRC clandestinely and deceptively interfered in both the 2019 and 2021 general elections. In both cases, these FI activities were pragmatic in nature and focused primarily on supporting those viewed to be either pro-PRC or neutral on issues of interest to the PRC government. And they also write at least 18 candidates and 13 staff members were implicated in PRC FI networks. This includes you know, this included members of multiple political uh, parties. Uh, so my question for this panel is, in the panel's briefings with CSIS in the lead up to the election, did they use this sort of language? This is the sort of information you received. Um, um, the pragmatic, like it depends, like there's a lot of things here. So that's true. There are. Well, we could break um, it down. What about we know? Um, what what I do remember. Sorry, I don't even see. Excuse me. Can we? Scroll up to the top of the document. Yeah. And this is there. Back to the. So this. Assertions in media reporting. Okay. So that is following the leaks. Um, thank you. That's that is really following the leaks, um, where um, a briefing was prepared in order to um, go back to uh, the leaks and give uh, information about what we knew and and when regarding those leaks. Um, so if we talk about a PRC, um, and we see that also in the public summaries that we have uh, sent to the Commission, um, that the, the approach and the tactic of PRC is really to do some pragmatic work um, in the sense that they are um, uh, doing activities um, when uh, they believe it is necessary to promote their own uh, interests. So Yeah, so that is, I'm just making sure we're not going to question period here. Okay, in a minute. That was an incredible exchange because Ms. Druin apparently has a very limited grasp of English. She didn't really respond well. Did she understand the question? And if you go through her answer, it's really, really inadequate. So I don't know if there's a language issue here or, or is she just stonewalling? Maybe that could be it as well. But how much more of this BS do we have to put up with in Canada? With, where the prime minister constantly lies about this, 
pretends he was on top of this issue, did nothing because he's obviously benefiting from Chinese election interference. This is really outrageous. I'm going to move the question period soon because we don't want to miss the opening question. I hope it's going to be about something other than stolen cars or inflation today because we need to get, I hate to say the cliche, to the bottom of this scandal. We have about five of them on the stove right now. And we need to get at them. We, and we need to talk about the Online Harms Act as well. Just listening for a minute here. Okay, we're still waiting for the first question from Pierre Polly. I don't know if Trudeau is going to be there again. Everybody always marvels, if, you know, he's not there, but he should be. And, oh, by the way, Redacted will be back tomorrow. Uh, Natalie and Clayton were just on a little vacation and... I'm actually doing a segment with Clayton in the morning, but I know a lot of you who watch my show also watch Redacted, and I watch it every day too. And he, they're they're back tomorrow. If you're wondering, want to highlight these stickers? These we've got these great stickers here, and I, I would really encourage you to go to the store if you want some. And they're just brand new, and we're we're proud as bunch of them. And I would encourage you to get some. And have a look in our store if you have a chance. I'm going to move the question period because you never know when this damn speaker is going to cut the <laughs> statements and go to questions. He never starts on time. It's very frustrating when you're trying to manage a show like this. But I'm going to move the question period now. And we're going to anxiously await that, that first question. Thank you for being a part of this because this is supposed to be not just educational and informative, but fun. If you've got to endure the liberal government, I think this is the best way to do it. So I'll be I'll be back shortly with, with some comments, as, but I try not to interrupt your favorite speakers, okay? <laughs> the common sense conservatives have a simple solution yeah. that can be implemented in next week's NDP liberal government budget. The government ought to find a dollar in savings for every dollar spent. This is reasonable and a simple lever that can be used to get their inflation under control. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, after eight years, Canadians are in debt, exhausted, and looking for relief. Let's axe the tax, build the homes, cap the spending, fix the budget. Let's bring it home. Yay! Yay! The Honourable Member from Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, one unlikely person has recently emerged as a new champion of carbon pricing. Oh. Someone who has done the math personally and knows firsthand that the vast majority of Canadians get back more than they pay. I am, of course, referring to the Premier of Alberta, Danielle Smith, who recently said, quote, I do my family's taxes, so I know we got $808.50. And when I go back and look at what I spent last year at carbon taxes, I would say that I probably end up better off with the transfer. Oh. Premier Smith went on to say that carbon pricing is, quote, the optimal way of going about and getting the outcomes you're looking for, and that this almost seems like the perfect policy. Oh. Mr. Speaker, oh, I agree with Danielle Smith. Our plan does leave more families better off, while at the same time addressing climate change. And I want to thank her for her clarity and rational understanding here, of this than, policy. Here, here, here. Just so the hell, all questions, let it have The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Common Sense Conservatives want to axe the tax, build the homes, or fix the budget, and stop the crime. But this Prime Minister is simply not worth the cost. After eight years, he's doubled national debt which has led to rampant generational inflation, forcing 2 million Canadians to food banks. According to his own statistics, the Prime Minister has spent more on interest on that than on health. Why is he giving more money to bankers than to actual healthcare professionals? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. I'm shocked as well. The Speaker, quite the contrary, it's the Conservatives who continue <laughs> to uh, put forward austerity and cuts whilst we invest in nurses and doctors. We are here to invest $200 billion 
dollars, Mr. Speaker, over the next 10 years in order to improve our healthcare system. We are here to deliver a national program for food uh, at schools to help children study with a full stomach. We will also be here to broaden child care benefits so that families can take care of their children while working. We are here to help them. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. But he's still not worth the cost. He continues to spend, 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 causing worst inflation levels. There are two million people that have to go to food banks every month. He's doubled the cost of housing, even after having spent $80 billion in housing. These are programs that balloon government costs and that but into provincial jurisdictions. Will he finally meet our premiers to defend his inflationist and expansionist policy? Yeah, let's see if Peter runs out of the House of Commons. The right honourable prime minister. We will continue to con to meet premiers to work on affordability for families in order to work for housing investments in Quebec, for example. We've put forward nine hundred million dollars for the House Building Accelerator Fund, and Quebec is doubling that money, meeting us halfway to build houses throughout the province. We are here to work hand in hand with provinces to fight against climate change, to fight against the housing crisis, and to invest in young people, invest in seniors. We will be here to build a stronger future whilst the Conservatives keep preaching austerity every single day. And I have chef de l'opposition. Common sense Conservatives will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Indeed, his carbon tax, which the parliamentary budget officer has proven, costs 60 percent of Canadians more than they get back in rebates, is now opposed by 70 percent of Canadians. Everybody understands that the tax is driving people to the food bank. That's why six premiers, including the Liberal Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, have Let's asked have for a meeting. Will he agree to a televised carbon tax conference if he's so sure of himself on this issue? Nothing about Chinese election here. The right Honourable Prime Minister. The Parliamentary Budget Officer has confirmed that eight out of ten families across the country get more money with the Canada carbon rebate uh, attached to the price on pollution than it costs them. That's eighteen hundred dollars arriving for a family of four in Alberta. It's thousands of dollars right across the country. These are things that are helping people with the high cost of living and groceries at the same time as we fight climate change. But Mr. Speaker, uh, what would be also helpful is if we were able to deliver the doubling of the rural top up to put hundreds of dollars in the pocket Very of good. Canadians. But the Conservative oh. Party is blocking the legislation to double the rural top. He is lying again about eight out of ten. He's reading from the same old script. Possible that given that the NDP Liberal government has a combined majority and can pass That's anything right. it wants, which is exactly why we're in such a mess today yeah. as a country. After eight years, this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost, and that's why the Parliamentary Budget Officer confirms 60% of Canadians are paying more in carbon taxes than getting back in rebates. But why doesn't the Prime Minister, if he believes the contrary, why doesn't he have the courage to sit down in a televised and open forum and have a carbon tax conference with the Premier. The right honourable Prime Minister. Because he's gutless. He sit down with the Premiers eight years ago and established the pan-Canadian framework on climate change that both puts a price on pollution and puts more money back in the pockets out of eight of ten Canadian families in the jurisdictions where the federal backstop applies. That is a way of both fighting climate change and helping with affordability. Now, not only are the Conservative Party uh, counting on pulling away, taking away those Canada carbon rebates checks. Uh, they're arriving this coming Monday on April 15th. People will see in their bank accounts the Canada carbon rebate that puts more money in their pockets ahead of uh, the costs associated with fighting climate. Well, he's stuttering and stammering the again. Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, he met the Premiers in 2016. Since that time, 
he's broken the promise he made them. He said the tax would only go up to 11 cents a liter. Now he admits it will go up to 61 cents a liter. He said the tax would make people better off. Now we have the parliamentary budget officer's report, which confirms 60% of Canadians pay more than they get back. The prime minister said, and I quote in 2015, Canadians need a PM who will meet with the premiers. What happened? The right honorable prime minister. He's, he's a coward. While the conservative leader continues with his misinformation and disinformation, the reality oh, is liar. the parliamentary budget, budget officer uh, said that eight out of ten Canadians do better with our price on pollution and the Canada carbon rebate. But liar. speaking of misinformation and disinformation, any responsible leader uh, that receives an endorsement and support from proven conspiracy theorist and liar Alex Jones would have immediately denounced that. But that's not what the leader of the opposition did he did absolutely nothing because those kinds of endorsements fit within his political strategy i knew that was coming i knew that was coming cheap cheap shot hello hello order The Honourable Member for Belleau Chambly. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is multiplying interference in Quebec's jurisdiction. In Ottawa, there is no department or expertise in health or education or child care or municipal affairs. They don't know how things work, but they have our money. Due Alex to a Jones budgetary imbalance, does right he recognize about 90% that the Assembly National of Quebec is, has better skills in healthcare, education, childcare, and municipal affairs? Simple question. The conspiracy theorist the here right is Justin Honorable Trudeau. Prime Minister. <laughs> Mr. He's Speaker, the we've always theorist. recognized and respected provincial jurisdictions, and we respect Quebec specificities, but we know that even with all the expertise under the sun, there are still Canadians who are finding housing, who are trying to find housing, people who are trying to find childcare spots, people who are finding it hard to well, make you say 98%, the federal government. We are here to work in partnership with Quebec, with Maybe provinces, right. in order to invest. <laughs> I've been following in Alex for a long time. Need. Yes, we have federal money, but we are here to invest it with provinces in order to help Canadians, and that's what we need to do. The Honourable Member for Belle Chambly, Mr. Speaker. When my car breaks down, I don't give my money to my dentist because my dentist doesn't know how to fix a car. They don't know how things work in Quebec. They have to uh, whittle together some skills in jurisdictions that are not theirs. Their interference makes things longer and more expensive, and it won't be better than if they just let us spend our money. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. We will always work hand in hand with the provinces in order to deliver services that Canadians need. But let us talk about dentists, Mr. Speaker. 1.7 <laughs> million seniors throughout the country have signed up to our dental care program that will be delivered from coast to coast to coast. And that includes Quebec. We are here to make sure that seniors in Quebec and throughout the country can obtain the health care that they need and that they could not afford before now. We are here to help the well-being of all Canadians and all Quebecers, and we'll always do so, respecting jurisdictions and in partnership with our partners. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. From Burnaby South. Well, I'm going to Mr. get Mr. Alex Climate Jones deny, on the show. Mr. Climate delay strike again. In the next couple the of months. The Corporate Nights report shows that the Prime Minister and is I'd, delaying $15 billion I'll be damned if anybody complains to hardworking about that. Canadians <laughs> to lower their costs and their emissions. Yet the Prime Minister has no problem finding $18.6 billion in free subsidies for big oil and gas. Okay. So why is it that the Prime Minister wants to put the shoulders or shoulder the burden of the climate crisis on hardworking people and not give them a hand, but wants to get billions of dollars like the Conservatives 
to Big Oil and Gas yeah. Corporations. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we committed to phase out inefficient fuel and gas subsidies, uh, oil and gas subsidies, uh, two years ahead uh, of all of our partners well, he's around He's getting a little We're frantic again. To do that. But it's unfortunate to see that uh, the uh, NDP seems to be falling <laughs> into the Conservative misinformation trap. Our price on pollution actually puts more money back in the pockets of eight out of ten Keep repeating your lies. Right across the country, particularly middle income and low income families, why we continue to fight climate change. Yes, Mr. Speaker, we developed a way to fight climate change and reduce emissions while putting more money in people's pockets, and we're going to keep doing that. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Paying the $15 billion are hardworking people, and that's wrong. Last summer, children were not able to go out and play and have fun in the park because of forest fire smoke. Uh, and yet, the it Liberals all think it is smart change. to delay climate action. What they sent cool. 18 billion in subsidies to big oil companies, yet are delaying 15 billion in investments for the climate crisis and to help people. Why does the Prime Minister prefer to put money straight into the pockets of big oil CEOs instead of actually helping Canadians? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Indeed, Mr. Speaker, we see every single year the ever-worsening impacts of climate change and the costs thereof, which uh, affect Canadians, our economy. And that is the reason for which we'll continue He's to fight against pony. climate change whilst putting more money in the pockets of eight out of ten Canadians because this is a responsible that plan that, is just that will not fight true. against climate change and care. will help with the cost of living. Airhead. Unfortunately, He's the Conservatives continue airhead. to say no to fighting climate change. They want to remove investments to help Canadians. People are going to look back on this era someday and wonder how many, how could we endure this? The incoming leader of the Liberal Party has just given a speech and given advice to his soon-to-be predecessor. He said that he agrees, so this is Mark Carney, says he agrees that there should be a carbon tax conference where the premiers can come together and share their concerns about the prime minister raising the cost of living and breaking the back of Canadians. Will the prime, the prime minister won't listen to me. He won't listen to the liberal premier of Newfoundland and Labrador. Will he at least listen to his successor and meet the premiers on the carbon tax? His successor, yeah. The honorable minister for energy no, is Trudeau flowing the coke again? Order. I think you might the have. Let's Minister see. for Natural Resources. Hard to tell from this angle. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Again, it is important for folks, for Canadians who are watching this debate to be you careful about the misinformation being spewed by the leader of the opposition. What a liar. It is important for a responsible government in this country to have a plan for addressing climate change and do so in a manner that enhances and addresses affordability concerns. That is exactly what the price on pollution does. Eight out of ten Canadian families get more money back. Two hundred economists Keep repeating your talking points. With us. It is such a shame that we have a bunch of climate deniers over there who have no plan for the environment and no plan for the economy. These people are just cardboard cutouts. Cardboard cutouts repeating the same talking points. I think Trudeau ran off. Leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, uh, so Mark typical. Carney, uh, who is the next Liberal leader, is a fierce supporter of the carbon tax. He's been called carbon tax Carney in the past, and he is willing at least to defend his carbon tax views in front of the premiers. The prime minister is not. He's running for cover and hiding from Canadians, he's gone. refusing he to defend it again. his own policy decisions. Hey, the folks, prime minister left. is really so proud of his plan <laughs> to hike the carbon tax to 61 cents a liter. Why won't he listen to Mark Carney and have a big, open, televised carbon tax conference? <laughs> Ran off like a coward he is. Yes, Lynn. He did it again. He can stand about 15 minutes. It's the best. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's very interesting.
interesting that the leader of the opposition seems so uh, so fond of Mark Carney these days, who actually, as you say, does believe in a price on pollution. Perhaps the leader of the opposition should listen to him. But it is important with respect to the premiers to know that the premiers have every right to submit a plan that actually meets the federal benchmark and put in place their own price on pollution. That is something that British Columbia has done. That is something that Quebec has done. Mr. Speaker, Premier Mo was actually here recently and, and testified before the committee. And what Premier Mo said is, we looked at alternatives to the price on pollution and found every one of them to be too expensive. This from a guy who has no climate plan, no... They're all so damn annoying. So arrogant. So completely oblivious to real people. Last week, the Prime Minister increased the carbon tax by 23% on Canadians, on gas, on groceries, on home heating. He's doubling down and defying 70% of Canadians and eight premiers who want him to axe the tax. Six of those premiers wrote the Prime Minister asking for a meeting to talk about his punishing carbon tax. Instead, the Prime Minister just shot down the idea because they already had a meeting eight years ago. Can the Prime Minister tell us how many premiers he met in 2016 that are still in power today. He's not there to answer. Mr. Speaker, actions speak more than words. Our actions on this I'll have a scotch and soda. Jenna Sedge is back. I'm going to ask the uh, Honourable Minister to start again because the Chair sincerely could not hear uh, what the minister was saying. The I asked for a scotch and soda. Families, children and social development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That should have been As louder. Said, no? Actions speak louder than words. On this side of the house, our actions, over 750,000 families benefiting from affordable childcare spaces, over 100,000 new spaces across the country, 7 million children whose parents benefit from the Canada Child Benefit, a national school food policy, their actions, Mr. Speaker, vote against funding to increase the number of spaces. Vote yeah. against a national school food policy, Mr. Speaker. They've made it clear they're not there for Canadian families. You are? The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, I don't know if she missed the question, but Canadians certainly missed the answer. It's zero. 2016 is the last time he had a meeting. Meeting Pokemon Go, dabbing, Harambe, that's what was popular in 2016. And you can get an apartment for half the price. Since the last time the Prime Minister had a meeting with the Premiers, gas and groceries have skyrocketed and interest rates have increased 10 times over. So will he put aside his desperation and defiance, do some work around here and meet the Premiers? Yeah. <laughs> The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Speaker, what Canadians will see today is one thing they will not hear from these Conservatives, Mr. Speaker, is the cost of inaction, the cost of forest fire, Mr. Speaker, the cost of flooding in our country. It's all climate change. Mr. Speaker, when each of these Conservatives are standing up, they're telling Canadians they have no plan, Mr. Speaker, to fight climate change. On this side of the House, we recognize, like all Canadians, we need to act to save the planet. We need to act on climate change. That's what we're going what? to invest in. What Canadians. stupid what rhetoric. To to it doesn't make even sure make any sense. For children. There will come a day where people will say, how did we put up with this? These lies. After eight years of this Liberal government, housing has never been in such a sorry state. Rents have doubled. Mortgages have doubled. And what's this government's strategy? To have a photo up. They always have an announcement with a follow up. But yesterday, they reached, they breached new grounds. Yesterday, the Prime Minister did a photo up on a roof. But that doesn't help Canadians put a roof over their heads. <laughs> the roof, yeah. <laughs> what is the government's plan to help Canadians who can't find a roof for uh, their heads? They don't have a plan. The Honourable Minister for Public Works and Government Services. As we said, there are two clear figures, six and 8,000. As his during his mandate as a housing minister, there were six affordable housing units built. We uh, made an announcement that will create 42 new housing units. That means that in his riding, we have created seven more housing units than his uh, leader did during his mandate as housing minister. The honorable member for 
Just one second. Just one second, if I can remember his the name. The honorable member for Louis Saint Laurent from the top. Once Mr. Speaker, more from the top. to tell my honorable colleague that I know what happens in my writing and that, yes, people are finding it hard to make ends meet. Yes, inflation is, ta is hitting people hard. And yes, this government is just spending without control. And that is adding fire to the flames of inflation. Mr. Speaker, the member who is Thank a minister you, as well, Thank who you. is a well-respected <laughs> academic, how will he explain to his future students that a budget can balance itself, like the Prime Minister keeps claiming? The Honourable Minister. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to <laughs> thank my colleague. I respect him. First of all, austerity is not a solution in 2024. It is April 9th. The second 9th, thing yes. I have to say is that respect is the foundation of academic relations. And that is true everywhere in Canada. I would like him to apologize to Quebec, to Quebec City, because he called the leaders of Quebec City incompetent, which is a shambles. I'm sure they are. The Honourable Member for Jonquière. New day, new interference. Today, it's right, the mental yeah. health of students. Got to make a comment here. You know, it's just incredible because I believe the day is coming when people will say, how did Canadians put up with a prime minister who could stand up in the House of Commons, well, once or twice a week, <laughs> and claim his damn carbon tax was going to save the planet from a non-existent climate change catastrophe. How could people even entertain that absurd notion? How did he get away with lying about it all those years? It's just so outrageous because it's all a huge fabrication. All right, I'll shut up for a while. I'm sure you. I'm sure you. The I'm sure cries. you all want to see. When invest in food for <laughs> our younger students, they cry. When we Tableau invest in, action. in our seniors, the Bloc and the Quebec and the Bloc and the Conservatives cry. They're just crying together at the end of the day. You don't know which one's which at the end of the You're day. You're the one in the bed so with the, the Bloc. We're just going to have the same people. What a joke! They've got a. They've got another. They've got. They've got another plan cooked up with the block. They're the ones who are using the separatists to stay in power. I would like to ask all members to make sure that uh, language used uh, be respectful and dignified in these halls. <laughs> Kenny, right. I can't the keep up your comments member today. For oh, my God. That's okay. I'll keep up coming. I do my best. We'd just okay. like to let the federal government know that we have collaborated well when they copied our childcare program. Given that we already had the skills, they sent us the money unconditionally and everyone was happy. So why would it be different for mental health? We don't have a childcare program, you idiot. That we've had for you're you're a separatist. <laughs> with you're not in government anywhere. Had for over 50 years. Why? Not these people for are this dicks. case, can they not just simply transfer the money to Quebec? The Honorable Minister for Transport. There's just such Mr. a waste Speaker, of space. The block is never happy. Block. We invest in housing. Blockheads. They're not happy. We invest in our children. They're not happy. This is we as much as this mad scientist here. In food banks. They're not happy. The block is never happy. They're just losing their identity. They're being eclipsed by the conservatives who are doing their job better than they are. The Honorable Member for Avignon La Métis, Matan Matapedia. While the Liberals try to govern Quebec, instead of Quebec, no one is governing the federal government. There's no one to yeah. table a true transition plan for the fisheries sector. There's no one to deal with a comprehensive... If you missed it, Virginia, Trudeau was there for about 10 and 12 minutes. And as one of our members noted, he skipped out of the House of Commons. So he's not there anymore. <laughs> directly responsible. So if there's no shortage of work at the federal level, why don't the Liberals actually get on with it and do their jobs? The Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for her question. As she knows full well for a long time, I've fought for the environment to fight against climate change. And back then, we all had a dream when I was in the private sector. We wanted a federal government that would invest billions upon billions in fighting climate change. It never happened before we came to power, Mr. Speaker. At the time, it was just $100 million, a couple of hundred million dollars. But now, these are a couple of hundred billion dollars that we are fighting, that we're using to fight climate change. It's an absolute record in the history of our country. We are transforming the economy and jobs for decades to come and in fighting our You are transforming. Change. You're transforming it back to the Stone Age. The That's what you're doing, Gilbo. Greenpeace, Mr. Nutcake. Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal NDP government, this Prime Minister is just not worth the cost. The Prime Minister raised his carbon tax 23% last week, driving up the cost of gas and groceries. Fortunately, Conservative Bill C-234 will exempt farmers' grain drying and barn heating from the carbon tax so food remains affordable. Will the Prime Minister lower costs on farmers and make food cheaper by passing Bill C-234 in its original form? The Honourable Minister for Natural Resources and Energy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, again, it's important to actually ensure You're welcome, that we're facts. 97% <laughs> of on-farm fuels are actually exactly. exempt from the price on pollution, and there is a rebate is to address uh, uh, farmers and farm uh, farm incomes on a go-forward basis. In Canada, eight out of ten Canadian families get more money back. In fact, Professor Dalter at the University of Regina, who the Honourable Member might want to go talk to, called out the Conservatives last week for misinformation. When Conservative leader and his ally and the Conservative leader's ally, Scott Bowe, appeared before Committee on the Carbon Price. Journalists called his appearance a parade of nonsense and completely dishonest. Conservative slogans and misinformation do not help Canadians with affordability. The Honourable Member from Regina, Wisconsin. Mr. Speaker, it's clear that the Prime Minister is not going to back down from his carbon tax obsession. It's clear that he is going to continue is. to raise the carbon tax on gas, groceries and home heating and make, make life even more expensive for Canadians. Since the Prime Minister refuses to call a carbon tax election, will he at least meet with the Premiers and listen to their plans to make life more affordable? The Honourable Minister for Natural Resources and Energy. The Honourable Member That's knows good. full well right. provinces and territories can put in place their own price on pollution. That is what British Columbia has done. That is what Quebec has done. Those provinces that are actually committed to fighting change. But the Honourable Member comes from a province that has no climate plan, no climate targets. Their, their, their Premier admits that the price on pollution is the most cost-effective way to reduce emissions, and yet he does nothing. That is shame. Shame. Hey, you're overacting. The honourable member. You know it's all a lot. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this NDP Liberal government, Canadians are tapped out. <laughs> April 1st saw Canadians hit with a 23% carbon tax increase by these Liberals. As a farmer, Mr. Speaker, I know the first-hand true impact of carbon tax bills on farm operations. The Prime Minister is not worth the cost. It's time to axe the tax on farmers and food. Yeah, and that was good, Emily. Before. Will the Prime Minister lower costs on farmers and make food cheaper by passing Bill C-234 in its original form? Thank you, Sandy. The Honourable Minister for Agriculture and Agri-Food. Mr. Speaker, I appreciate my Honourable colleague's question. Oh, no. It's important to remind my colleague, as a farmer, I'm fully aware that farmers are on the front line of climate change. I'm and sure you're fully aware of anything. Mr. Speaker, that farmers are devastated by massive storms on the prairie. Straw worth $300 a bale. That is crazy, Mr. Speaker. We have a, a plan to address <laughs> climate change, and we have a carbon, uh, a Canada carbon rebate that uh -huh. we fund put more money in eight out of 10 Canadians. We are addressing climate change and making sure the polluters pay, Mr. Speaker. That's Joe Biden's uh, other brother. From Simcoe Gray. Mr. Speaker, while the Prime Minister tweets out sunny ways from his rooftop, food banks in Simcoe County are reporting a 100% increase in use. Last week at the Angus Food Bank, Director Heather Morgan told me that active soldiers from Base Borden are regular visitors. Let that sink in. Meanwhile, Liberals hiked the carbon tax by 23% and continue to delay common sense Bill C-234. Will the Prime Minister pass Bill C-234 in its original form and axe the tax on farmers and make food more affordable 
for all Canadians. <laughs> The Honourable Minister for Natural Resources and Energy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The whole structure of the price on pollution, as the Honourable Member knows, is done in a manner that creates an incentive to reduce carbon emissions, but do such so in a manner that is affordable for Canadians. Eight out of ten Canadians get more money back. It works in How they can repeat to that? Income, so that those who they know the that's an out-of-date study. The best off with respect to carbon they pricing. know that was superseded by the last Speaker, the conservatives like to, to understand that or not, parliamentary budget officer's report. They know that. Both admitted that carbon no, it's, pricing it's is frustrating to watch this for me too, people, believe me. Because they are just self-professed so liars. Members would like to make sure that uh, questions and comments are uh, directed through the chair. The Honourable Lord of the The Honourable Member for New Westminster, Burnaby. Thanks to the NDP, we now have dental care in Canada. And this was opposed by the corporate conservatives at every single step. Now, the Democrats fought for nearly 2 million seniors who will benefit from the dental care program in a few weeks' time. Now, dentists are raising concerns about the rollout of the program. Seniors shouldn't have to wait any longer to benefit from going to their On dentist. The when will the, what will the minister do to ensure that every senior... Who are you thinking of, angry Canadian? I did see program the video. ...without delay. Trudeau reminds me of Joe Stalin. <laughs> Honorable that seems around in the mid in the circuit 1940. Is exactly right. When parties work together and focus on solutions, we get things done. And that means making sure that for millions of Canadians who don't have access to oral health care, they're going to get dental care. 1.7 million seniors. It's the euthanasias are. We've seen hundreds of thousands of dental providers across the country. How many kids did you kill today? Portal to make sure that it's even easier for dentists to participate by working together, both as part parliamentarians, but as Canadians, we can get through difficult times by making things better together. The Honourable Member from North Island, Powell River. Mr. Speaker, the Guaranteed Income Supplement is a lifeline for seniors across this country. Shamefully, at a time when grocery prices and rents are sky high, the Liberals are clawing back this support for more than 100,000 seniors just a receiving squad of jokers. Clowns. This is wrong. Buffoons. The Liberals shouldn't be punishing seniors who were injured on the job. You're in bed when with the Liberals. You're keeping them in the power. So that seniors can afford and you pretend you're a critic? Rent. <laughs> well, you can't pretend to be a joker because you are a member. Speaker, I'm very proud to stand in this house next to the Minister of Health as we roll out one of the largest social programs that Canada has ever seen. We are now up to 1.8 million seniors who are now registered for Canada's How new doing today, program. Emma? This is something that will save lives. This is something that will restore dignity to the lives of so many seniors. And with so many seniors registered up until the month of May, I look forward to more seniors enjoying the dignity of quality health care, regardless of injury, regardless of birth weight. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You don't want them to have dignity. You no, want them to have me. The Honourable Member for St. Laurent. In 2017, our government released our defense policy, Strong, Secure, Engaged. Since then, the world has fundamentally changed. Russia has attacked Ukraine, the Arctic is more accessible to foreign actors, and the international rules that have kept us safe for over 75 years are increasingly challenged. As a member of the Standing Committee on National Defense, I personally advocated for a modernization of our defense policy to better meet the needs of today. Can the Minister oh, good of Defense update this House on our government's work to update our existing defense policy? The Honorable Minister of National Defense. How about that? She put her two cents worth into the defense policy. And I'm pleased to share with this House that yesterday we released our renewed vision for defense. Our ah. North Strong and Free is a clear plan to build Canadian armed forces that will defend our sovereignty and protect they ripped our that globally. Off. It's My defense policy speaker, paper. It will support the members of the Canadian Armed Forces. Back in the Reform Party. Numbers. It's a plan Canadian to Alliance days, actually. The equipment and capabilities <laughs> that they require to fulfill their mission. It's a plan to assert our sovereignty. I to can't believe it. They did. They ripped the continent. title off. And finally, Mr. Speaker, it's a plan that makes us strong at home so that we can be strong around the world. This is the former Open Borders Minister who couldn't the stop the massive Oxford. migrants from crossing the border. After liberal NDP government and their carbon tax, Canadians are struggling to put food on their tables. When you tax the farmer who grows the food and you tax the trucker who ships the food, you punish all Canadians who buy the food. Food banks like the Cambridge Food Bank are now seeing record-breaking demand. 
This Prime Minister's 23% carbon tax hike is not worth the cost. So will the Prime Minister lower the cost on farmers and make food cheaper by passing Bill 234 in its original form? Getting the same the answers, though. For housing infrastructure and communities. Can't believe there's been nothing on China today. That's an oversight. I'm proud to be part of a government that believes that hungry oh. kids should have food on the table. I'm proud to be part of a government that's taking action to implement Stop a school your food wings. program so those hungry kids are able to eat when they go to school. It's unbelievable to me to hear this rhetoric from the conservative opposition when they had the gall to stand up and vote against putting food on the table for hungry kids. They talk a big game, but when they have a chance to do anything to put the food on the table for my constituents, they oppose at every turn. We'll do what it takes to help working class families and middle class families and kids when it comes to putting food on the table. Ah, the honorable member from Oxford. Mr. Speaker, you really are Minister pathetic. so out of touch because oh, here are the facts. After eight years of this Liberal NDP government, we have a record smashing two million Canadians using a food bank in a single month with over a million more expected this year. Food banks like the one in Cambridge are now seeing dual income families, work, full-time working Canadians, and our seniors lining up at the food banks. Yep. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Will this Prime Minister finally show some compassion and make food cheaper for Canadians by passing Bill 234 in its original form? Liberals using kids as shield. Pathetic. Families, Go on, That's what they're doing with the Online America. Harms Act, too. Months That's how they're going to push it through. this country that we've been helping, I, I worry for them, Mr. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition has been very clear, and his actions are all we need to know, all we need to point to. Oh, Jen is serving again. Opposition of a motion and a vote to support a national school food program yeah. can point to their opposition and a vote to oppose expanding funding for more childcare to help families out. Mr. Speaker, their actions are clear. They will cut. Cut, cut. The honorable mem member for Miramichi Grand Lake. Well, Mr. They start Speaker, cutting liberals from the House of years, Commons. The that would NDP be great. Liberal government and the Prime Minister's 23% carbon tax is not worth the cost. The Prime Minister doesn't understand. If you tax the farmer who grows the food, you end up taxing the family who buys it. People are struggling in New Brunswick. 40 to 50 military families need to visit Gagetown Food Bank just to feed their kids. Now, UNB had to create their own food bank to feed their students. Will the Prime Minister lower costs on farmers and make food cheaper by passing Bill 234 in its original form? The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, it's hard to take seriously the Honourable Member's criticism when he and his party voted against a pay raise for the men and women who serve this country yes. in uniform. Oh, when we go to this chamber every day, we have an opportunity to stand up for policies that help middle class families put food no, on the not table. Not trying to get you in when any we trouble, cut Don. taxes to the middle class and raise it on the wealthiest one percent, they yeah. voted against it. When we stopped sending child care checks to the wealthiest people in this country so we could put more in the pockets of nine out of ten Canadian families, they voted against it. And now they want to justify their climate denialism from taking hundreds of dollars from families who live in our communities. It's not right, Mr. Speaker. We're going to do what it takes to help people. Yes. Thank you, Emily's dismantling. The member from Salt Emily's dismantling. Mantling illusions. You Thank you for being a new member. Food, and you tax the trucker who hauls the food, then you hurt the families who buy the food. Things have gotten so bad under this Liberal NDP carbon tax coalition that military families stationed in Borden and Gagetown are having to be using food banks. And troops trained right here in Ottawa are relying on food donations from college staff. After eight long years, this prime minister isn't worth the cost. Will the prime minister lower the cost on Canadian farmers and make food more affordable for all Canadians by passing Bill C-234 in its original form immediately? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for National Defence. First of all, Mr. Speaker, let me respond to, because I share the concern about the welfare of every member of the Canadian Armed Forces. You know, we work very hard to make sure that our forces receive all of the supports in housing and in financial supports that they require to do the important mission that they perform for all of us in this country. And Mr. Speaker, we recently negotiated, for example, a very substantial pay raise because they've earned it and they deserved it. And that's why it was such a huge disappointment when that member and all of his colleagues 
voted against the money for that pay raise. Mr. Speaker, we have a responsibility in this House to support the men and women to protect our country. The Honourable Member for Lac saint jean Mr. Speaker, imposing visas on Mexicans was necessary, but the federal government had promised that it would not affect workers. Now, Eastern Quebec is reeling from delays in the arrival of temporary foreign workers in the fishing and well, processing thank industries. thank you, Emily. That's Fortunately, very kind. Fortunately, since the Bloc Québécois leader very wrote kind. to the Minister of Immigration and the Prime Minister on March 25th, just marvelous. the situation has improved, and this should be acknowledged, but there are still concerns. We simply ask the Minister to reassure us. Can he confirm today that all the workers will arrive as soon as possible and that this situation will not affect other sectors like, for example, agriculture. Thank you. That's a good one. The Honourable <laughs> Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the member for his question. It's a very relevant one. It's clear that we all want a successful fishing season in Quebec, in Canada. Those, When those fisheries depend on Mexican visas that need to be issued, we are working 24 hours a day so that this is done quickly. We will continue working on this. We're not out of the woods, but I have hope given the hard work of the teams working on this. Thank you. Let I have the, the Honourable Member for Avignon, La Métis, Matan, Matapédia. Welcome. There's a way to be both responsible at the border and responsible towards the entire fishing and processing economy in the Gaspé Peninsula and eastern Quebec. We simply have to work intelligently Welcome, and without partisanship. The cooperation of the Minister of Immigration is to be commended, but he has the fate of an entire industry Welcome, in his hands. Akasha. One company has already closed because workers didn't arrive in time for the opening of the fishery, and others are afraid of suffering the same fate when their season opens for lobster. Can the minister reassure them that workers will arrive as soon as possible? The Honourable Minister of Immigration, kind, Refugees Sandy. and Citizenship. Thank you. Thank you very much. As I said clearly to her colleague, we are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that is the case. And imposing the visa on Mexico, which the Bloc Québécois called for, which is important, which we need to continue to underline. And That's so very far, kind, Sandy. Thank you who have to have their passport stamped in Mexico. It has to continue. They need to do it with third this parties guy. who are helping those factories. At RARCC, we will work 24 hours a day so that it can be processed within 24 hours. Thank you. Let I have the, the Honourable Member for lévis lot -Pignard. Mr. Speaker, after more than eight years of this Liberal government, we all We're know it's not worth it. the cost. The price of housing continues to soar, and the government is forgetting about municipalities to increase new housing construction. Mr. Speaker, will the Prime Minister finally build housing and eliminate bureaucracy in his next budget? I might as well ask them if they're going to stop breathing. The Honourable Minister of Innovation, we won't take any lessons from the Conservatives. What we are presenting is a plan for Canadians, <laughs> a plan to build more housing a plan to create more jobs, a plan to have more prosperity in the country. Mr. Speaker, Canadians You're welcome, watching at home Ryan. understand that slogans it's, don't create it's a jobs. It's pleasure to be associated slogans with Slogans don't build houses. Every, and everyone slogans is there. Thank don't you. create economic prosperity, Mr. Speaker. Oh, thanks we'll again, Emily. My God. Well, my, keep to their slogans and videos. Like we you. will focus on Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable <laughs> Member for lévis lac -Pignard. Mr. Speaker, yeah. housing prices will continue Edo. to skyrocket, <laughs> warns the CMHC. The average cost of an apartment could rise by 27% over the next three years in the Montreal region. A conservative government, government will reward cities that increase housing construction. Why, Mr. Speaker, doesn't the Prime Minister listen to common sense and work with his provincial and municipal partners to build the housing needed for the well-being of all Canadians? <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Jean. Very, very kind. Innovation. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Speaker. People laugh at home when they hear the Conservative members talk about cooperating with municipalities. The last time the Conservative leader spoke to the mayor, they cringe at home when they listen to you. Montreal, he insulted them. <laughs> is there anyone who thinks that cooperating is about insulting others? In 2024, it's about cooperation. 
That is why we put forward a plan to build more what housing. A bunch, help what a cast of losers, these liberal cabinet ministers are. That's how we work. They couldn't even sell opinions. used cars. These people are damn useless. Member for Podnev Jakarta, Mr. Speaker, I'll talk to you about another scandal. After eight years, it must of this be the lowest intelligence the quota of, of any cabinet in history. It's increasing everywhere in Canada at a rapid pace. Let's take the example of Saint Jerome, according to a Radio Canada article. Isa, a newly homeless woman, said, There's always my daughter who could help me, but I don't want to be a burden on her. Can this go? Redact it's back tomorrow, Akasha. My question is simple, Mr. Speaker. I'm doing an interview Will this with Prime Minister late in the morning on the carbon tax. Everything possible to build so the show should be on that afternoon. They've just they've taken the a bureaucracy little vacation with the next kids. next Tuesday's budget. So I miss the show. Too. The Honorable Minister of Housing, Infrastructure, and Communities, Mr. Speaker. It's essential to well, here invest. Here he goes. You're going to, to try to fly housing. again. We are making investments with Quebec to build affordable housing. After an agreement with Quebec with $1.8 billion, we are building 8,000 affordable housing units just in Quebec. Harrison, across the entire country, when the Conservative leader was the housing minister, they constructed a total of six affordable housing units nationwide. Shame. There is no contest when it comes to supporting the most vulnerable. I question their authenticity when they actually talk about the investment. This guy can never get his tie straight. <laughs> he always looks like he didn't woke up five minutes before QP and walked in. Mr. Speaker. It's probably a disaster in his personal life in Davenport are concerned about the fact that the Conservative Party wishes to cut their Canada carbon rebate. For most Canadians, each penny counts. The members of my writing depend on these checks. Can the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change explain to the House how these Canada carbon rebates reduce emissions? Get it out. And how these checks help Canadian uh, families. You must have a lot of disappointed people in your writing. Honorable that. Minister of the Environment <laughs> and Climate Change, I thank my colleague for her question and also for her efforts in French. I'd like to highlight that starting on Monday, the Canada carbon rebate will increase on April 15th for a family in Ontario, $280 four Here's times the a year. Commie. The PBO said two weeks ago, that the measure that has the least impact on the economy that allows us to reduce greenhouse gas if it emissions is the pollution price. Over 200 economists have confirmed this, and the Premier of Saskatchewan, with whom I just about never agree, has admitted that it's the best way to reduce climate change. A member from Yorkton and Melville. Speaker, after eight years of this Prime Minister's record high debt and deficits, he's not worth the cost of his overpriced socks. Inflation and interest rates continue to make lives worse. Now, an economist has said that interest rate cuts may be further delayed because of this NDP Liberal government's out-of-control spending. Conservatives have offered a common-sense solution to fix the upcoming budget. When will this Prime Minister stop his out-of-control deficits with a dollar-for-dollar -dollar rule? Find a dollar in savings for every new dollar he spends. The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Mr. Speaker, we will take no lessons from the Conservative, Mr. Speaker. I don't Mr. take Speaker, nothing from the Conservative. Canadian is a plan to build more homes, Mr. Speaker. What representing Canadian is a plan to create more jobs, Mr. Speaker. What representing the Canadian is a plan for prosperity. On the other side of the house, Mr. Speaker, it's slogans. Canadians at home understand that slogans don't create jobs. Slogan don't slogans don't build You're talking about slogans? Slogans don't build prosperity, Mr. Speaker. We'll let them invent a new slogan while we focus on the matters of Canadian. How about Canadian carbon rebate? Is that a slogan you have with? I'm giving him too much credit. He, he doesn't even have half of this. NDP Liberal government's addiction to spending is out of control. Hey, Cheryl, nice They're to see you again. High off an unsafe supply I used to work for Cheryl for a while. Of drugs and Way back when I, before I got back into journalism. Their spending habit is driving up inflation. Interest rate Stop cuts holding water for might everybody. be anybody. because of other <laughs> control spending. Their far-left allies in B.C. just had their credit rating cut. This Prime Minister and his Socialist Coalition are not worth the cost. This government must find a dollar in savings for every dollar spent. Will the Prime Minister cap spending with a dollar-for-dollar dollar rule to bring... <laughs> Are you kidding? They're spending twice as much as they're taking in. Mr. Impossible. Speaker, 
the member opposite continues to ask questions, but not really focus on what her party has continuously done, which is vote against measures to support Canadians time and time again. 120 votes prior to the holidays, all night voting, voting against children, voting against supports for families, and voting against our military, Mr. Speaker. So we will take no lessons from the Conservatives in terms of supporting Canadians because our government will always be there for them. Yes, yes, the incredible. Honourable Member from Chatham Kent, Leavington. After eight years of this Liberal NDP government, this Prime Minister continues to demonstrate that he's not worth the cost. This government has added more to the national debt than all previous Prime Ministers combined. Yes, combined. And now a leading economist has stated that interest rates cuts are being delayed because of this massive government overspending. Wow. Will the Prime Minister cap government spending with a dollar for dollar rule which finds one dollar of savings for every dollar of new spending so that interest rates come down and people can stay they are homes. literally spending great twice great. as much we as they are taking in revenue so what do you think what do you think they're, they're going to do take more down two months in a row below three percent triple a credit rating mr speaker and just in the last nine months a Food program for to students in school. We're going to make sure that there's homes built across this country. How did that member and his Ontario colleagues vote when it came for the plant in St. Thomas? How did they vote when it came to support the floor plant? They voted against. We're here for Canadians. That's what they expect. We're going to do that each and every day. Hey, this is the bag of wind who spends his evenings t on the phone with transgender youth. The honorable member from Calgary Skyview. Mr. Would you Speaker, want that creep talking to your kids? We need to be connected, especially <laughs> oh. in rural, remote, and indigenous communities in Alberta. It allows access to education, jobs, healthcare services, and innovation that otherwise would be unreachable. Unfortunately, for 10 years, the Conservatives failed to prioritize investments and connectivity. Because of their lack of action, communities in my province have been left out of those opportunities. The good news is that our government is tackling this issue head on. Can the government tell us what progress has been made towards connecting Albertans to affordable quality? <laughs> Couldn't even finish your damn script. The Honourable Minister. Since 2015, we have been making investments in Alberta, Mr. Speaker, to, so Albertans can access the tools of the 21st century. Today, just under 90% of Albertans hey, have your access to high-speed internet. In March, <laughs> I was there to announce 14 projects to connect over 22,000 homes, 3,400 Indigenous homes, nice. all wow. in rural Alberta. This $112 million <laughs> investment is a partnership with the province as part of our <laughs> commitment to connect all Canadians by 2030. We will always stick up for Albertans, Mr. Mr. Speaker, and my colleague from Calgary Skyward always sticks up for Albertans and his constituents too. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Victoria. Mr. Speaker, Canadians oh are experiencing the brunt of the climate crisis with damage caused by flooding and the fear of wildfire evacuations. Oh well, the Liberals fair, are rewarding fair. the very people who are getting rich off it. Liberals gave over $18 billion to rich oil and gas companies last year. And today, we found out they broke $15 billion in climate promises. They announced $15 billion just for the photo ops. Why is it that the Liberals have no problem rewarding Canada's biggest polluters, but they won't invest in our children's that's right. <laughs> the Honourable Minister for the Environment and Climate Change. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my honourable colleague for her question. As she knows, I was an environmental activist for many years. He has a, he has years, a bad brain day every every day. Tens of billions every day of he speaks in the House of Commons. To fight climate change, to create the jobs and right, the economy of the 21st century, Mr. Speaker. We have committed more than $100 billion since 2015 in the fight against climate change. That's not double what has been done before. Well, it's all wasted money, isn't it? Because you haven't it's achieved anything with more. it. Wow. What an idiot. It has never been done before in Canada in terms of investment to fight climate I'm change. I'm not surprised. The opportunities of the 21st century. I hope it's never done again. The Honourable Member from Skeena, Bulkley Valley. 
Mr. Speaker, many Canadians were let down when the Liberals suddenly ended the Greener Homes program. And yesterday we learned the Greener that over a billion program? dollars promised to that program <laughs> went unspent. Wow. Meanwhile, across Canada, hundreds of people built their careers and their businesses on providing service as part of greener homes. They were urged to do that by this government. Now they feel like the rug's been pulled out from under them. Some of them are selling their equipment. Why has this minister left these important clean energy workers in limbo? Here, here, here. The Honourable Minister for Perfect. Energy and Nat now. Sorry, Natural Thank Resources you. and Energy. For the question and for the, the discussion that he and I had at the airport on this particular subject, and I think we we're intending to meet more about it going forward. The uh, Greener Homes program was indeed very successful. We actually utilized all of the funding early, um, and uh, and thus we have closed the portal. Early? But we have also announced that we'll sure? be moving forward with a new program that will be focused on folks who live on modest incomes, enabling them to make deep retrofits moving forward, to reduce carbon emissions, and to enhance their energy savings on an ongoing basis. And we are very much committed to putting that in force. <laughs> Hey, Thanks for putting all of that enthusiasm into it. the end of question period. Well, isn't that a I shame? I would like to take a moment to make a statement concerning the question of privilege raised by the member for Central Okanagan, Similikin, Nicola. We'll just see what this Yesterday, is. on Monday, April 8, 2024, the member raised concerns on the government responses to order paper questions. All right. That's not important. Anyway, thank you so much everybody for joining us today and emily's dismantling illusions thank you for gifting 10 members today that was a beautiful thing to do and you don't know how much that inspires me and encourages me and exhorts me to keep doing this my hair is my hair i'm having my own bad hair day here here <laughs> so <laughs> and i'm i thank you so much for that because i I'm doing this as an independent journalist in addition to what I do for some of the new media. I keep writing my articles. I keep writing my columns. I hope some of you have a chance to read those. And that's really what I've always done in journalism. But doing this, I think, is important because we need to fight the censorship. We need to fight the Online Harms Act. We need to fight the indifference sometimes in the opposition. And we need to keep doing what we need to do to get this country back to normal to get this country back to semblance of normalcy, to bring this country back to sanity. We need to do that. We need to work together. And it's because we can do this. And it's something that Neil Oliver said on my show this morning when we were talking. He said, the social media and the internet has allowed us all to get together and to go beyond the grasp and the control of big government. And that's what we're doing here. So thank you so much for watching today. I will be back again tomorrow with more, and it's always a pleasure.